my name is Kushinka Bute, and I am a foreign medical grad. I went to the University of Zimbabwe for my medical school, and I am currently a PGY1 um, in internal medicine. So my I am success story is not your usual conventional pathway because first of all, I am considered by the system as an older grad and I was also changing specialties. I have a background in pathology and after about 10 years, I decided to change to internal medicine. So I matched into internal medicine and um, I think I was successful because I had a lot of, I had a lot of help and um, I just listened to good advice from people who necessarily weren't going to take me into their programs, but who had experience with the whole residency program. And um, I was just determined not to give up. So I believe that I ended up where I am with just having a lot of determination and perseverance, not giving up. Um, and just kind of digging, digging deep into my, my support system and just having faith that things will work out. So that's how I ended up matching. Matchy Resident was very instrumental in narrowing down my application choices to programs which I felt would not see my journey as a red flag, but rather as a strength because when I put in my year of graduation and I put in um, my research experience, the number of clinical experiences that I had, I was able to filter out programs which might not have even given me enough time to explain myself. Um, and I felt that the, the profile that came up was in line with people who were like myself. And because of Matcha Resident, I actually applied to all of the programs that came up after I put in my details. And I had a very good um, interview season. So it's just so difficult to, 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 to know where to apply because there's so many programs out there. And there's some programs that you want to go to, but the reality of my situation as well was that I also had a limited budget. I couldn't just ap apply to all the programs. I had to be very selective of how I was going to spend um, the money that I had. So I didn't want to waste it on programs where I didn't think I'd be a good fit. So Matcha Resident was really instrumental in removing all those unnecessary programs that might not have been fruitful for, for, for my residency application cycle. Fortunately for me, I could apply to two specialties because I had background in pathology um, and I was, it wasn't something that, I don't know, I, I applied to pathology and internal medicine. Um, I had background in pathology because that was my first love, if I could, if I could put it like that. But, you know, since I left pathology over 10 years, I kind of transitioned my career towards a more clinically oriented path. So um, I pursued my dream and that was to try and jump back into the clinical world after being outside of it for quite a while. So it was a risk, but I'm glad I did it. So I actually applied for two. And although the majority of my interviews were in pathology, because I guess I'm going to assume maybe because I had pathology experience, um, I still had about three clinical um, interviews in internal medicine. And then I also had a prelim, a actually not a prelim, a transitional year interview as well. So in total, I had 14 interviews, but like I said, the majority were in pathology. Um, and I just used, um, I also enjoyed the, the feature actually, before I forget, on Matcha Resident where, you know, past applicants give their feedback because that gives you a good talking point when you go to the program. Um, so I really appreciate the previous applicants, whether they matched or not, who kind of gave feedback on some of the programs where they matched. 
because it kind of gives you a feel of what the program is like and it just gives you a good um, starting point for conversation. So I actually enjoyed that feature as well. Um, I also liked the rank assist because you know after a while you, you forget and it's a bit tiring. It's very exciting at the beginning when you when you you know you get to travel, but then after a couple of interviews, sometimes you you tend to tune out a little bit and you lose um, your ability to pick up the fine prints and you forget. But I actually always made sure that after each interview, I would actually go back and put down the small things because sometimes during the interview season, you you only want to remember the big things, but I believe sometimes the small things is what will make the difference in the residency program. I think all programs will teach you the fundamentals, but if you don't take the time to actually think about, did I actually like the location? What did I think about the weather? Do I have family in that area? What will be my support system? Um, you can actually end up with a little bit of an imbalance. So I liked that uh, ranking assist program because it gave me a very comprehensive um, analysis of all of the places I interviewed, not just the academic part, but I'm a strong believer in a very well balanced life as well, because, you know, if I wasn't going to be happy with the weather, that would affect my performance. If I was going to feel very far away from my support system, that was also going to impact me. So I really appreciated that tool as well. So I believe that there's no resident who is a resident. I don't think there's any applicant for residency who's going to forget their date of their, of their interview. But it was nice to just have a reminder and, you know, a nice organized format um, in the order of the upcoming um, interview. So that was also quite useful. The advice that I would give applicants who are trying to get into residency, um, particularly internal medicine residency, is that the interview process is not an academic assessment. They're not really interested in what's in your mind because I think you've already proven that already by going through medical school um, and passing the USMLEs. I believe that you have to understand the culture of how people connect. I came from a very conservative background. Um, where sometimes, you know, even to, to speak up, um, especially being a woman, was not the norm. Um, sometimes just observing and saying less was my default. But what I had to learn for the interview is that, you know, first impressions do count and people want to just feel comfortable when they see you and they just want to be able to connect with you because the interview is only about 15 minutes with each with with each person who decides so you don't have a lot of time to to settle in and to warm up you just kind of have to go in and learn to connect with people so i spent a lot of time volunteering to overcome my i guess my introvert tendencies of just being a little bit quiet being reserved because sometimes it creates a lot of awkward moments which might be misinterpreted um, in a situation where people are trying to get a feel of how they would work with you in a 15 minute interview. So I would recommend that people just need to be comfortable talking. You know, if you're the person who gets on an airplane and you want to just mind your own business and you put headphones, get practice and, you know, start talking to strangers, but not just idle chit chat about the weather, but actually show interest and just learn to connect with people. Um, sometimes connections can come from just knowing whether they like pets, because you might like pets or whether I went for an interview and I connected really well with one of the residents because, um, because of our background interest in art um, and some other residents would talk about plants that they keep so just be confident with just striking a genuinely interesting engaging conversation with somebody you don't know because that's what residency interviews are about um, people skills the soft things that you're not going to study about but something that has to be tangible and it must fit in with the with the group of residents that are there so that's the first advice that I have. That just learn to connect with people. Um, if you're shy and you're an introvert, learn to, to just engage with people um, and have a conversation where it's just not you talking, but actually show interest and want to know the other person. Because even if you want to follow up, maybe you want to write a thank you note, which some programs don't like, but some programs appreciate, it's not going to be a generic 
note, but it's actually going to be based on a conversation that you might have had. Um, you can talk about, oh, you know what? I had so much fun. It was so nice to connect with you and find somebody who enjoys ice hockey. And you know what? I'm going to be watching the game next week and I'll be rooting for your team. I don't know. You just have to learn to connect with people um, in such a short space of time. The second piece of advice I would give to foreign medical grads, particularly those that might feel that they don't have what I'm going to put in quotation marks as a conventional pathway of like coming straight out of high school. There's a lot of us like us who have had life in between or who've kind of tried other things, changed specialties. So don't feel like you have a pity story that you have to explain and explain and explain and explain. You kind of have to own your life and own your story and say it in such a positive way that people don't feel like there's a lot of negative energy around it. Um, like I said, I was trying to change specialties. I had been out of, the pro, out of medicine for quite a while, but I didn't make it some sad story like it's a red flag. If anything, um, it was a good experience because that's where I learned a lot of leadership skills and that's where I realized that I could have a greater impact in my community because you know, um, just knowing how to deal with primary care issues is what I felt would give me the greatest satisfaction. So rather than feeling like I had to explain all the gaps, I um, actually just did it in such a way that it was a positive story that people would remember and um, I just felt that's how I connected with the programs. My recommendations for the first year of residency, so far from my extremely short experience, is that you must come in with a lot of humility and you must be able to ask for help and not even feel bad about it or feel that it's going to reflect negatively on you because there's so much to learn and there's a lot of things that you don't know and being receptive to help, I think, is a great characteristic to have. And also expressing that you know your limitations and actually just being honest and saying, you know what, I'm not comfortable with this. I need help with even something that you might feel is something a medical student should know. Um, it is your own journey. Don't compare yourself with somebody else. And just be ready to ask for help and be ready to, to learn. Come in with the attitude of wanting to learn. Um, set realistic goals for yourself as well. I always try and spend, you know, at least an hour at home reading every night. And I have to be so intentional about that protected time. And then when I'm on the floor seeing patients, I also make sure that I read about that particular patient so that I absorb as much as I can. I'm present in that moment. I'm not thinking about how early I want to leave or, you know, spending time surfing the internet or checking Facebook. When I'm in residency, I'm really there, so present, trying to absorb as much and getting help. And I ask help from everybody, whether it's the medical assistant, whether it's the PA, whether it's because they've been there, they have so much experience. So residency is about a good attitude, wanting to work hard, making the most out of it, making good friends, but just really having that attitude of wanting to learn. I think to close off this interview, um, one of the one of the reasons why I believe I was successful is because I have a very, I have a very good, um, I have a very, I'm a, I'm a very strong believer in, in faith. And one of the things I say often is rather than saying, you know, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this because that is how I felt. Like I didn't know how I was going to match. I'm an older grad. I'm trying to change specialties. I don't have as much clinical experience, but rather than saying, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I would often say, Lord, I can't wait to see how you're going to do this. So I did the best that I could because that is all I can do. I can only be the best version of me. Um, and then I, 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 I left the majority of it to a higher being. And that was kind of what I 
I, I waited with excitement to see how the story would unfold. Um, there's a, there's, a, there's a significant number of people who know my story because, you know, the way I never got to finish my pathology residency was actually because I didn't get a visa. After I went um, to my country on my maternity leave as a PGY2. And, you know, I literally left my residency program saying I'm coming back after six weeks, you know, laundry to be done, you know, the house left in a bit of a mess, excited to go home and show off my new baby, only to be told that I couldn't come back to the US. So despite that journey and not knowing how I was gonna come back, which is why I said, I've never given up. I believe that sometimes you have to, to be patient and wait for the right time, but, even in that process of waiting, I still think that people should be intentional about progressing themselves. Like if you don't match, and that's actually a question that some of my interviewers would ask. So what are you doing right now? Because sometimes you won't match the first time. And even when I tried to come back into residency, I didn't match the first time when I actually managed to get back a, a visa. I didn't even match the second time. Um, but every time I didn't match, especially if I developed a relationship with people in that program, I would reach out to them with that element of humility and say, okay, I don't, I, I appreciate that you gave me the interview or I didn't get an interview, but could you please help me to strengthen my application for the next cycle? And some people tell me, okay, you know what, Kushinga, there's a concern that you haven't done this or you haven't done this. So I think if you work on it, that would help. But rather than, like I was saying, feeling so overwhelmed and wondering like, oh my God, how am I going to get back into residency? Um, I'm not going to settle for less. I just decided to, to have a prayerful heart and just say, okay, you know what, God, this is what I want, but let it happen in a way that I'm going to be amazed. So that is my saying. I say, rather than saying, oh God, how am I going to do this? Say, God, I can't wait to see how you're going to do it. Because Sometimes when you have this script and you want to go to a certain place, you might actually limit yourself to opportunities that might actually bring greater growth. Um, one of the years when I applied to residency at an institution where I'd been doing research, I was so disappointed because I'd even published a paper with them and I felt so connected to the program and actually narrowed my residency applications that year of feeling like this was the right place for me. But when that didn't happen, that's when I actually came and I, I subscribed to find a resident. And I had to have an open mind to see what would happen. And I'm so happy when I look in hindsight that I didn't, I didn't end up in that program that I was so desperately trying to get into because I'm really happy with where I am. And I can see that the... The, the, the learning curve is so steep and I'm a natural learner. I like to be challenged. Um, it's, I can see the potential and um, what I'm going to be in three years. So come with an open mind and, you know, whatever, you know, whatever faith based people have, whatever, whatever higher being you, you subscribe to, I really think that also plays a crucial part. So that's my last piece of advice. I did not use match a resident the year I didn't match. But then the following year is the year that I used match a resident because like I was saying, I decided to just open up all possible options. So the year that I did use match a resident was very fruitful. It worked well and it was part of the success story.